Welcome to the cabin of fears. Have you ever pondered the impact of those eerie hallucinations on the lives of those administered by the sinister curse depicted in Smile 2? Let's take a deeper dive into this chaotic world and explore how these unsettling phenomena wreak havoc, throwing victims into a whirlwind of confusion and terror. When someone like Sky Riley becomes entangled in the web of the Smile Curse, it's as if her entire existence is commandeered by a malevolent entity that preys mercilessly on her deepest insecurities and hidden fears. This dark force drags her into a dizzying vortex of hallucinations, leaving her loved ones utterly bewildered and questioning her grasp on reality. And let's face it, those dramatic outbursts are simply the cherry on top of this tumultuous roller coaster ride of dread. Welcome back to the cabin, everyone. Today, we're venturing into the mysterious and spine chilling universe of Smile, two to unravel the intricate threads of reality and illusion intricately woven throughout the film. From Sky Riley's terrifying odyssey to the menacing presence of the Smile entity, we're here to delve into how this demonic intruder exploits its victim's deepest fears and secrets, crafting a complex web of deception and mental manipulation that leaves them perpetually questioning their own senses and sanity. So let's start with Sky, brilliantly portrayed by Naomi Scott. She becomes ensnared in the grip of the smile curse after witnessing the horrific demise of Lewis, a drug dealer in a scene that leaves viewers on the edge of their seats. Just when you thought the life of a pop star couldn't get more chaotic, Sky's existence spirals into madness as she begins to see hallucinations of a disfigured Lewis and her deceased partner making unsettling, ghostly appearances. These psychological tricks erode her resolve, gradually pushing her toward a tragic end as she struggles to distinguish between reality and the entity's manipulative fabrications. Now let's dissect some of the movie's pivotal scenes to ascertain what's real and what's merely another cunning ruse by the entity. First on the list is Lewis's death one of the film's most shocking moments. Lewis transitions from paranoid to pancaked, using a weight plate to meet his gruesome end. This grim event unfolds before Skye even begins to witness the phantoms of her mind, marking a significant plot twist. The haunting visions of Louis that follow, they're merely the entity's calculated strategy to keep Skye perpetually on edge, ensuring she remains ensnared within its sinister clutches. Next, we turn our attention to Morris, the enigmatic ER nurse. Is he a genuine savior or just another mirage conjured by Skye's troubled mind? Morris claims to have unraveled the mystery of the smile entity and suggests that Skye could fake her own death to liberate herself from the curse. But should we place our trust in someone who vanishes like a magician's assistant in a puff of smoke? Initially, many viewers are inclined to believe he's real, but that scene in the abandoned pizza hut where he disappears faster than pizza at a college party, strongly suggests otherwise, likely another of the entity's clever tricks to toy with Skye's fragile psyche. And what about those messages from Morris? They might be as authentic as a politician's promise during election season. When Skye meets him at a pub and finds herself swarmed by adoring fans, was Morris even present? Probably not. The bewildered expressions on the fans' faces make much more sense if she was simply having an animated conversation with herself, reminiscent of those folks you see chatting animatedly on Bluetooth in public spaces, leaving onlookers scratching their heads in puzzlement. And there's Sky Spo's best friend, Gemma. Was she a real companion or merely a figment of her imagination? In a plot twist worthy of the most dramatic soap operas, we discover that the Gemma Sky thought was steadfastly by her side is in fact the entity in disguise. When in the real Gemma calls Sky, it becomes a spine-chilling revelation that the entity has been orchestrating the entire drama from behind the scenes, pulling the strings in a terrifying, insidious game of deception. All right, let's dive even deeper into the tangled web that is Smile 2, where reality and illusion dance a macabre tango. Picture this. You've got an entity that doesn't just haunt its victims from the shadows, but steps into the spotlight by shape-shifting into their loved ones talk about upping the ante on psychological horror. So the burning question is, could others see Gemma too, or was Sky just having a solo performance in her horror show? Sky's confidence, Gemma, had been missing in action for a while after a fallout that likely involves something as trivial as borrowed makeup or a misunderstood text. Yet, despite her absence, she makes a reappearance, but only sometimes appears to others. This already has us scratching our heads. Then we see Sky's mom Elizabeth giving Gemma a warm greeting, 
this little interaction hints that maybe, just maybe, the entity could be pulling the wool over everyone's eyes, not just Skye's. It's like, it's saying, watch as I bamboozle the whole room. And let's remember that spine-chilling phone call from Gemma. The entity's ability to mimic her is a crucial clue, highlighting its power to shapeshift in front of those who aren't even under its spell yet. Imagine being at a party, and someone morphs into your best friend right before your eyes it's spooky, right? This isn't just a party trick. It's a full-on psychological ambush. Now let's talk about the heated subject of whether Skye actually bumped off her mom, Elizabeth. Was she ever hospitalized, or was this just a vivid hallucination cooked up by her stressed out mind? This question is like a Rubik's Cube of confusion, and it's one of the film's most debated moments. During the movie's climax, we see Skye in a hospital bed, watching as the smile entity devours Elizabeth. She ends her life in front of Skye, but then, plot twist. It seems like Skye was the one who committed the act all along. It's like the movie's pulling the rug out from under us, leaving us with more questions than answers. But hold on, the final scene throws us another curveball. As Sky takes the stage for a performance, there's Elizabeth alive and kicking front and center in the audience. She's as shocked as everyone else when Sky goes full rock star, smashing the microphone into her own eye. So what gives was the whole hospital scenario just another one of the entity's cruel tricks? How does Sky manage to go from hospital patient to pop star performer in what seems like the blink of an eye? It's like trying to figure out how your favorite series character came back to life without any explanation. And don't forget Sky's manager, who's casually chilling by Elizabeth's side in the finale, looking like he's just seen the world's most confusing magic trick. Our theory? Elizabeth was never a victim of Sky in the first place. It was all a mind game orchestrated by the entity, cranking up the psychological torment to maximum levels. And if Sky ever did find herself in a hospital room, it was likely a wild ride with more drama than her hallucinations led us to believe. Leaving these tantalizing questions open-ended is like serving a suspenseful dessert with a side of mystery sauce. Director Parker Finn could have spoon-fed us the answers, but he wisely left us to stew in our theories and interpretations. This ambiguity only adds fuel to the fire, making the movie's end a deliciously open book for viewers to interpret. It's like those choose-your-own-adventure stories but instead of happy endings, you get existential dread. Um, Smile 2 has managed to hit the horror sweet spot by keeping things intriguingly vague, which has contributed to its massive box office success. The decision not to spoon feed the audience and to leave some threads untied is something we absolutely adore. It adds a layer of mystery to the horror genre, making us think and analyze long after the curtains close. Uh, we want to hear from you. Share your thoughts in the comments below about the movie's perplexing parts. What's your take on what's real and what is just a trick of the entity's sinister imagination? And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to stay tuned to The Cabin for more thrilling discussions and in-depth analyses. Remember, in the enigmatic world of Smile 2, every guess could be a step closer to unraveling the truth.